Hello everybody, this screencast is brought to you by Kunal Patel and Abdullah bin Hablil. The design goal of this project is to create an additional ethanol recycle stream to the already existing Stober silica nanoparticle production process. The Stober process produces high quality monodispersed silica nanoparticles with diameters ranging from 20 nanometers to 200 nanometers. The Stober process is used for the preparation of silica colloids by the hydrolysis of alkyl silicates and subsequent condensation of silic acid and ethanol using ammonia as the catalyst. The starting reagents in this reaction are tetraethyl orthosilicate or TEOS, ammonia, ethanol, and water. The applications. Many research groups have applied monodispersed silica colloids as model material in various applications. For example, they have been used as packaging material for the capillary chromatography. There have also been more recent investigations on using these particles to fabricate photonic crystals of 3D periodic structure. The particles have also been used in the medical field. Biomedical and biotechnological applications such as cancer therapy, DNA transfection, drug delivery, and enzyme immobilization have all benefited from these colloid particles. The product has also been used in a lot of cosmetics and beauty products. Some of the design constraints. Various uses of silica nanoparticles require specific particle sizes with a very narrow distribution. The concentration of TEOS and ammonia both affect the size of the particles. Increasing the concentration of either of these reagents increases the rate of hydrolysis and condensation. The rapid hydrolysis will increase the intermediate concentration until it reaches the supersaturated region. The consumption rate of the intermediate through the condensation is also sped up, which shortens the nucleation period. In short, this means that the total number of nuclei formed will be less, and thus the final particle size will be greater. The current process. The issue with the current process is that it produces a waste stream that contains roughly 85% ethanol according to sources. The remaining waste is ammonia and water. Ethanol is by far the most expensive waste product, so recycling it could potentially save a lot of money that would otherwise be wasted by dumping the waste stream out. One thing to note though is that the ethanol recycle stream cannot have any ammonia. This is because ammonia affects the size of silica beads, so if we do not get rid of the stream of all ammonia, it may alter the size of the silica beads. <clears throat> the input-output diagrams. The input-output diagram on the left is the Stober process without the recycle stream. The inputs of TEOS, ammonia, water, and ethanol are shown. The products are silica nanoparticles, ammonia, water, and ethanol. As we will see in the process flow diagram, the, TE, the silica nanoparticles will be completely separated from the ethanol, ammonia, water, waste stream. An assumption made in this process is that all the TEOS is used up in the reaction. The input-output diagram on the right is the Stober process with our added recycle stream. The Stober process is unaffected by the addition of the recycle stream as long as the ammonia is completely removed before recycling the ethanol back into the process. When doing our economic analysis, we can simply focus on the amount of ethanol that is recycled. This will give us the dollar amount that would be saved if adding the recycle stream. The process flow diagram. Our process flow diagram consists of a single distillation column that will theoretically create an ethanol stream with close to 100% purity. The ethanol ammonia water waste stream is sent into the tray distillation column and the ethanol is separated from the ammonia. The ethanol water product stream is sent back into the Stover process to be reused. The ammonia water waste stream is sent out and here it is assumed that all TEOS is converted into the SNPs and that the SNPs are completely separated from the ammonia ethanol water waste stream. It is also assumed that the ammonia is completely separated from the ethanol. A more in-depth analysis would have to be done on aspen to determine the number of stages, the reflux ratio, and the purity of the ethanol stream. With the growing commercialization of nanotechnology products, human exposure to SMPs is increasing, and many aspects related to the size of these nanomaterials have raised concerns about safety, compelling us to pay attention to process considerations, namely safety and biohazards, environmental hazards, and social impact. 
safety and biohazards. The distinct physical chemical properties of nanoparticles indeed determine their interaction with the cell, within the cell, and even subtle differences in such properties can modulate the toxicity and modes of action. Although SMPs could certainly provide benefits to society, their interaction with biological systems and potential toxic effects must be carefully addressed. Toxicological research into silica particles has found that the typical long reaction induced by chronic inhalation of crystalline silica is silicosis, a generally progressive fibrotic lung disease exemplified by the development of silicotic nodules composed of silica particles surrounded by world collagen in concentric layers with microphages, lymphocytes, and fibroblasts in the periphery. This concludes our discussion on biohazards generated by the production of SNPs. Environmental hazards Moving on to another hazard that is, based, that is posed by our project, we will discuss some environmental hazards that ought to be considered when collecting ammonia from the waste stream after recycling ethanol and purifying it from ammonia to reuse the recycled ethanol for the sober process. The main local problem of ammonia released into air is the unpleasant odor, which is detectable even at low concentrations. At particularly high concentrations, it can also harm vegetation. The harm caused by ammonia in water bodies is more serious because it is very toxic to aquatic organisms. On a wider scale, ammonia plays a role in the transportation and enhanced deposition of acidic pollutants, resulting in acidification of ground and water bodies, which can harm plant and animal life. Social impacts. Finally, we conclude the process consideration section with the social impact our proposed project poses, namely the implications of SNP development research on society. As stated, SNPs are produced through various processes for vast biomedical purposes. This also includes cosmetics. The production of modified SNPs, which could be used to improve cosmetic and beauty products, could impact society by altering beauty standards through advertisements on social media and celebrity consumers. Go ahead. Sources show that producing 10 kilograms of silica nanoparticles per day produces 34.2 liters of waste per day. Roughly 92% of this waste will be ethanol by mass. If assuming the plant is active 333 days a year, the total cost of the ethanol comes out to be a little over a million dollars. This is assuming that 100% of the ethanol is recycled back into the Stober process. With this value, the break-even capital investment will be a little over $10 million if assuming that the ROI is 10%. The nano silica market. The nano silica market has been rising due to the demand from the rubber industry and the concrete industry. The global market is expected to reach $5,140 million by 2025. Even though, strict regulation is expected to limit the use of nano silica particles. Under the Article 13 of the European Commission, cosmetic products that contain nanomaterials shall be notified six months before the product is launched. Furthermore, the, according to the EU Commission number 1223, usage in cosmetics over specified limits may be harmful to the human body. In spite these strict regulations, the use of nanosilica will continue to increase, thus producing efficient and cost-effective methods of production will be ever so much more important. The alternative PFD malt. Here we have an alternative design proposal to the trade distillation column, the molecular sieve separation method. Molecular sieves are absorbent materials typically used in the petrochemical industry to purify natural gas streams from impurities. They separate components based on the molecular size of each component. Ethanol is the biggest molecule with a molecular size of 4.4 angstroms. Water and ethanol are 2.75 and 1.145 angstroms each. Thus, we propose using a four angstrom molecular sieve to separate the ethanol from the other two compounds. The high adsorbity of the sieves suggests that ethanol can potentially be completely purified with this process. The two co packed columns filled with four angstrom molecular sieves are shown. One of the columns is an absorber and the other is a regenerator. The columns will switch roles when one gets saturated and the other capacity is replenished. This allows a continuous process to be developed. The nitrogen gas is pressurized and heated to regenerate the molecular sieve. A capital cost analysis on the materials as well as the sieve is needed to determine if this option is viable. Even if the distillation method is cheaper, is a cheaper solution, both of the distillation and the molecular sieve methods should be further explored. 
Specifically, the ethanol purity rates from both me methods should be determined. Even if one method is cheaper than the other, the cheaper method might not be viable if all of the ammonia is not removed with that method. Our final conclusions and recommendations. Based on the input-output analysis, it is recommended to further investigate the capital costs to add the recycle unit to the Strober process. The project shows promise considering that it produces over $1 million in saved value. The environmental damage, though, caused by ammonia is a concern and proper neutralization methods should be investigated. It is also recommended to explore the capital costs of the molecular sieve method. A proper input-output analysis needs to be done and the cheaper sources of nitrogen gas need to be found. Run Aspen simulations on both designs and determine which simulation process produces higher purity ethanol and lower energy consumption. From this, you'll be able to decide which method to use. Finally, a recommendation for the marketing team. Focus on marketing products to research-based companies rather than product-based companies due to the strict regulations on the use of consumer products.